guys welcome to ocd real talk um thankfully we don't have nick today um <laughs> we we have to th- this is the thing this is the trope of this channel we have to bash nick or he has to bash me but hey yeah. um so what we thought we would talk about is because we've all had themes and fears related to losing our identity or like even like our values or losing who we are um because one of the things that Uh, a lot of ocd sufferers say in their messages is also like this is not me i just want to be who i am and there is a certain thought process attached to that so um i thought we just get into that and uh, talk about that jema i think we should start with you like um again what was your what was your struggle with trying to latch on to like an identity of yourself i think for me it was really wanting to be a good person so my kind of views on what what being a good person entailed um you know a good person should be pure they shouldn't have inappropriate thoughts they shouldn't do anything that's deemed morally bad so i had a uh, moral scrupulosity ocd and that really latched on to that i want to be this person i don't want to be someone that's done anything wrong previously or I don't want to be someone that's like kind of honed in on that with the but I have done things wrong in the past so how could I ever be a good person um so for that I mean breaking down the concept of good and bad people was really really important for me and I don't think I would have overcome a lot of the themes I had without doing that yeah i think by the way like i realized even though contamination ocd and r ocd were probably my big themes but only in retrospect i realized that oh god i also had moral scrupulosity stuff going on mm-hmm. as well because i was obsessed with being a good person um yeah. and it started i think even at age 9 or 10 maybe i was like going to the mosque uh, every week to pray um and when i would go there i would get intrusive thoughts about sex with god and i was like why am i thinking this oh my god i'm such a pervert i'm such a bad person yeah. go away, go away and the more i tried to like make the thoughts go away the more they stuck around obviously moral scrupulosity slash religious ocd elements here because i thought oh god that god will be displeased with me if i do this so um so yeah definitely definitely i think they i've the- never been yeah. religious so i never had any kind of religious ocd but with the moral scrupulosity i remember actually saying to my mum once that i wish i was religious because i feel like if i went in into one of those confession booths and confessed everything mm. that it would somehow make me feel better which is really strange because at the time i had no idea what ocd was yeah. i didn't know confession was a thing you know i didn't know that that was a compulsion maybe, and i actually maybe said i need to confess yeah or like or, religious thought can keep a check on you in a certain mm, way i think maybe yeah. that's also like a perceived comfort thing that oh some someone or something is keeping you check sam were yeah. you were to say something I said I'd have been in there every day at confession booth. <laughs> <laughs> I'd never yeah, have left. Right. <laughs> Bring my meals here. Yeah. Hi, father. I'm here again. What now? <laughs> yeah. Um, Sam, like, what about you? Um, what was yeah. that identity crisis that you thought you had? Yeah, I can relate to Gemma there massively. So being a good person. um latching on to that um a, a social socially rejected being an outcast the odd one out hence why it latches to pocd rmocd real event false memory any guilt related theme so i just had, felt like i had to fit in um and so same with jemma being a good person if you did do something wrong in the past or do something wrong in the future or if only they knew this and if they knew that that I couldn't possibly live with myself I couldn't was possibly it, by the way, ever was it ever like in, in some like a part of it at least was it derived from people around you as well in the sense like people saying that oh sam is such a great person or sam is like this and wanting to like really hold on to that image you had built up for yourself yeah like yeah so like being a, a like a really great bloke or you're a really good person Look. or you're a man all these things that, that people yeah. say um, <laughs> and when, when you're struck in the themes like pcd um and you're thinking well only if they knew this and if they knew that so that can yeah put the pressure on um and just and intensify it make it feel um like what could you say if only they knew 
that was quite a bad one for me when they're giving you compliments or giving you praise because they like you and you've got this hammering in the wet in the background it could be quite difficult yeah i have another question for you but i'll come back to that later um uh, alexander um what about you like where did you were you ever obsessed with like oh i just want to be this person that i've thought of myself to be uh yes absolutely and uh mostly i was uh constantly obsessing about uh, wanting to be the person i was before ocd and uh, it mm-hmm. was a big one for me i didn't realize it uh, actually before i found ocd recovery and after it some time when i finally I realized that it's a big co- compulsion because I remember I was waking up every day checking if I feel uh, like uh, in the way I felt before OCD. And then sometimes I uh, catch this feeling for me that for a minute I was very lucky. Uh, I, I, I was very happy. I, I thought, oh, this is how it was before. But then next intrusive thoughts or some memory and stuck again in the cycle so losing myself was a big issue for me especially i remember uh when emma said uh, when german story said in previous uh, uh, real talk that when he, uh, started really false memory and thought to herself how colors me now? I, I struggled with the same uh, thing, and I, I, I was constantly replaying those memory in my head. I was, I was thinking how, how, how this couldn't bother me before, and now I'm stuck with it completely. And I, I just thought to myself, maybe before uh, it didn't bother me because I, I, I was such a bad person, but now my uh, <laughs> consciousness awakened, you know, and uh, that, that and that's why I'm struggling with it. Uh, so much so yeah it was a big issue for me and uh, uh, constantly chasing for my old self it was mm. like big big compulsion I, you know for me like a, a, a strange compulsion related to this was also like I would just be like I, I would just ask people uh, I would, just out of curiosity like oh what do you think of me or like what is your impression of me and, and if they're if their impression or their thoughts aligned with what I thought about myself, I would feel really great about myself. And if it yeah. was something completely like, if they had like a completely off thing about, let's say if they thought, oh, we think you are this kind of person, it would make me feel so odd. Like, oh God, like, do I come off as this person? And because I've also wanted to be very specific about what people perceive me to be like how they saw me like i wanted to be very specific about that by the way alexander in your language is there a word for dude or bloke like they have in the uk <laughs> uh, uh, i i am not sure i understand this word can you just repeat like how how it sounds like um bloke uh, or like dude it's like you know a friend or Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um all right. We have like, a specific word as well, but um it's called yard. Um so uh-huh. it's pretty much the same thing. The so, mill, and what you yeah. were saying. Um so if they said they didn't like you or they really hate you for whatever mm-hmm. reason, how would you have coped? Would you have just tried to please them or would you be like or just crumble. I think so. I think oh. I would want to either like um want to change it somehow or want to convince yeah. them otherwise or like I, I yeah I I would be annoyed. I mean at times at times I would make the like effort to do that, but at times I would also just leave it. But then I would walk away feeling extremely annoyed by it. Um, yeah. and I would feel very conscious in front of those people then later. But people please talk about a lot. Yeah, yeah. The the question I actually had for you or Gemma, actually, you can answer this as well. Is like after recovering, were, did you feel like, oh, now I am what I thought I was, or was it then like, okay, I'm still me, but a different version? Yeah, I 
Oh. Sorry, I was waiting to see if Sam jumped. I was like, I don't want to talk over each other. Oh. I was like, what's happening? <laughs> Why has the pause? Um, Hopefully Demi, we're, polite. We're, we're British. <laughs> Demi, you can go first. Perfect. Um, so, in what way do you mean, sorry? So, as in, did I then think of myself as the person that I thought I wanted to be? Or... Yeah, basically that and like, was it like, oh, like Alexander said that I am my old self again, or was it like, oh, I am a new me. I still feel like myself, but I'm a new me. No, I'd say I feel completely different. Um, mm. I don't, when, when I have times now where I'm feeling like good and, and better, I don't, I still don't feel anything like how I did before I suffered. Um, I suppose that's partly because I don't really remember a time of not suffering so much, um, but also because you just you just change completely. I think as you mm -hmm. go through the recovery process, so yeah. like the way you see everything changes, um, yeah. and because I don't put so much pressure on how I'm feeling in comparison to what I used to, I I don't even think about it so much anymore. I don't I don't think like. Oh, am I like this? Am I how I was then? I'm just kind of like I just no, I just get on with it, and I don't I don't really think. Yeah, about I mean, I've learned so much, much from my journey, so I don't see the point of looking back and thinking, "Oh, am I who I once was?" Or because my beliefs are completely different, my perspectives are completely shaped different. Um, so now I, I I never look back. Um, but yeah, like we say a lot on this channel, how thankful we are for um. The suffering that we've had uh, mm. i know that can sound difficult when you are in the midst of it but when you come out the other end and start seeing big progress and and you, you know applying the unconditional acceptance to all parts of life not just ocd you're a completely different person with how you how you perceive things in life all different yeah. obstacles i think it was, it was similar for me in the sense that like in fact i think having recovered then now when i look back on that idea of myself that I really want to latch on to. I don't like that. I don't like that version I was trying to be because it was, number one, it was way too much pressure, that idea I was trying to latch on to. It was way too much pressure to the point of I wanted to be that version, but I also started to really dislike that version because it, it felt like I was trapping my own self in a way by trying to yeah. constantly be like this, this specific version. So I think like now looking back, I would not want to be that version because that version is so black and white and so also, again, irrational and just not the best personality, not the most engaging, great personality. I'd be very, I'd be annoying. I wouldn't want to be around myself. I like looking at people now and seeing... Like if, if someone says, oh, this person did this and then starts slating them as a bad person. I like the fact that I have the ability to look at that and go, well, they did something wrong, but that doesn't make them entirely bad. Like, even though I don't always say it out loud because there's yeah, no yeah. point in arguing with irrational people, it's, it, you know, there's no point in doing it. But I really like the way that my brain automatically doesn't write someone off anymore like it used to because I used to automatically write people off and automatically write myself off yeah. and I quite like being able to see it differently without voicing it because mm -hmm. yeah. there's I, no point but I, I like that I can see it I find you notice a lot how society how rational society is didn't you when you mm. when you're on this journey and, you, and you're changing your beliefs you can't believe how other people but we we change ours because it got us into so much trouble emotionally Why yeah. because we have to yeah yeah, Fine. Alexander, like, Alexander, like, after having worked on, like, OCD and having made a lot of progress yourself, um, like, did people around you, like, your partner or family members, mm -hmm. did they notice or did this ever say anything of how you had changed or if they noticed any change in you? Uh, I would say uh, my friends notice it and uh, uh, because uh, I started dating my girlfriend when I actually uh, had chronic OCD already and uh, uh, I, I, I don't know what my mother is thinking because she, she actually doesn't know that I have it. 
Because mm. uh, when I have this breakdown, I uh, the COVID starts, the pandemia has started, and uh, I was living in their house, and uh, I just like chronically lashed, and uh, she noticed that something is wrong with me. Mm. Uh, I had no idea what is happening, and after a month, I uh, uh, like started to. Uh, uh, I found something about OCD and tried to explain it to her, but she she couldn't understand me. And I and now I uh, I was mad at her back then, but now I understand mm-hmm. how can she understand me? She if she had had no idea what it is. And uh, then when I started working again, I moved to the city. So we just like sometimes I'm I, I I'm coming home. We just like have a regular life. So. Uh, she don't say anything about it, but my friends notice it, uh, and uh, sometimes they often disagree with me because they have this black and white thinking sometimes. And yeah. uh, I had have, have a friend that has these mood swings, like uh, she 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 often like from adoring something to hating completely something mm-hmm. and uh, when i try and try to tell her that it's not like black and white and uh, especially when mm-hmm. uh, the person did something bad on from her point of view it's bad but um, she has tendency to write them off yeah. and also she tells me that she she, she suffers from she, she doesn't have OCD but she suffers from uh, sometimes from anxiety or anxiety. From, uh, yeah. Like, uh, yeah yeah and your and uh, I, I I try to explain her that this is because you this like you 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 try to perceive the world in like this black and white thinking and, and <laughs> that's why you have like swings <laughs> from <laughs> euphoria <laughs> yeah from euphoria <laughs> to rage you know this constant yeah. like yeah no I mean it, it it's it's interesting I think everybody reaches that point of being like wait everyone is irrational around me why am I thinking this way there is that uh, you really notice uh, that difference but it's uh, interesting to uh, mention that because even with me I feel like probably my friends noticed the most difference in a way I think family kind of has an idea of you and they kind of stick to that uh in in some ways sometimes but i think my friends also notice the most difference they think i'm calmer i used to have a lot of nick energy basically um <laughs> like you're much calmer now you're you're quite like chilled out i was like yeah i think so <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I, I just also wanted to add that when I started improving, when I uh, started uh, educating myself with uh, unconditional other acceptance idea, mm. and uh, uh, I didn't notice it back then, but I try to make other like to embody this concept. You, my girlfriend, my friends, I wanted them to be rational, and uh, mm-hmm. even after some time, I understood that I'm still irrational <laughs> if I want them to be rational. Why would they also? It's good if they like listen to me, but if they don't, that's okay. So it, it took a lot of time. <laughs> yeah, I find yeah. that is anger. How angry people get. Yeah. When a, a annoying situation arises. I always try and work on anger and go, okay, why are people getting angry? Look at your yeah. beliefs straight away. And like in the driving is a good classic example of that, how angry people get. And you're like, wow, like what must be they thinking to be that angry at something? I mean, in the scheme of things, it, it means nothing, but you, you see it all around you, how, people, how angry people get over the smallest of things. Yeah. And even like relating to the idea of the self, I think like sometimes like people get really worked up if you say something um they think is wrong about them uh something that doesn't completely align with what they think their personality is um and, and they can really like have a go at other people just because of that um yeah, yeah. oh god i lost my train of thought i was just about to say something regarding that idea of the self yeah sorry i think i just also wanted to quickly bring up like like even like the Ellis books bring this up quite in a in a really good way that like all of us are co- like all humans are constantly like progressing and changing like even us having talked after this hour there's something 
in my knowledge at least or in maybe in my perspective or even just having spent this time together it has absorbed somewhere maybe in me or like mm-hmm. there's something different now and i think that and that's really important to really recognize because we think that we are just this one person or we need to be just this one person for like forever but we are genuinely constantly changing on a daily basis um and we are processes like like i think even when i'm 80 years old on my deathbed um i or i don't know if i make it till that is but like i feel like even then i'll still be thinking that i'm different to how i was at 79 it's not the same like i learned a lot in this even just one year and stuff like that so i just want to like mention that because i think ls really put it in a unique way that that unlocked something in my brain in terms of perspectives yeah yeah i mean we're <laughs> we're ever changing so any life experience and so to be suffering is is going to constantly change and you're not just one person and that's it so you can't be defined by an act for example because there's pretty different reasons why you've done this act and, and who you are now what you've learned from that you've learned from previous yeah. holding yeah. the belief that you need to be perfect or you can't make a single can, being the same person can actually be, be det- detrimental to your life because then you don't open yourself up to new experiences new knowledge new skills even for a job that you yeah. might have. um you become very It's, narrow focused there's a comfort trap 100% yeah, like Taking a break. Um, sorry, I think everyone just spoke at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to add to, to constantly changing as persons like uh, Heraclitus. I don't know if I say the spell correctly in English. The philosopher he lived before even Plato and Stoic philosopher. He told that um, no man can uh, go into the same river twice because it, it's not the same river and it's not the same man. like yeah really constantly yeah. changing process yeah jema thank you um yeah no i was just going to say as well um and i think this is mentioned in the alice books about um humans being like natural scientists like we're scientists by nature so with everything we do we kind of gather evidence for it and then we keep referring back to you know what we've done and if that fit in with what we wanted it to do and so with with every single thing we do we kind of experiment and then we learn from that and then evolve again and i think i think that's really interesting as well when he put it in that way because we do do that with everything we do with with work with friendships you know we we try and say things and do things a certain way to receive a certain outcome and then we yeah. kind of look at it and go did that make that friendship better did that make me do better in my job and and then we change it according to our findings i actually forgot mm-hmm. that um that line in there so maybe you it's recently really read them again maybe that's why you remember it well but yeah I, i haven't actually i think that one just really stuck with me yeah. i thought i just thought that was really interesting yeah the demo one stuck with me too Hmm. Well, I'm just reading out of it here. <laughs> yeah, she has it open at, at the back. Oh, yeah, this bit on the page 52 that bit was. <laughs> I know the book like the back of my hand. Um <laughs> um maybe we should start writing dialogues on our arms from like Paul David. <laughs> um but right, so that's everything we wanted to talk about today guys. Thank you very much. Uh Momen has no sound currently, so he's just going to wave goodbye. <laughs> And we'll see you on the next real talk. Bye. See you. Bye.